Hey YouTube, Nick and Carrie here for a weekly gaming recap. Bringing you all your gaming highlights for the week of June 7th, 2014. Oh yeah. <laughs> you messed me up. <laughs> sure I did. So what did you play this week? Um, not a lot. No? No, it was a busy week, so. Okay. Played some Terraria. Um, started playing because... Uh, Looking forward to the Harvest Moon titles, so I started playing Harvest Moon again on my 3DS, and mm -hmm. then I just played a couple of games at Hearthstone, so fortunately not as much as I wanted to play this week. Okay. Not Sorry. bad. That's okay. Got a couple hours in Terraria, so, you know. That was, like, your main focus this week? Yeah, Terraria. working on the update. Yeah. Working on what I'm starting on the project, so. Okay. And what did you play? Um, we tried to play Watch Dogs. Uh, we found out their friends list sucks. Sorry. So we could get into a private free roam. But we could not get into any of the mission-based structures. Okay. And for the multiplayer? Correct. Um, could do one-on-one, -on -one, like uh, hacking somebody or having somebody hack you, but... Um, that seemed to be random, who you got to hack. It wasn't like, you know, I couldn't select that I wanted to hack my friends. I tried it out on the tablet. Mm -hmm. I finally got that to work twice. The first time, the person must have disconnected or something. Or maybe I was having a problem, I don't know. I can't really say one way or the other. But my game was still running, but all of a sudden his car stopped and it stopped taking damage. Mm -hmm. um, the second time I actually completed it, so that was kind of cool. I got like one point for that, or whatever. Um, one point. <laughs> well, that's kind of neat, because you draw on the tablet. Um, you basically plot the path of a helicopter. It's like simple overhead view, and you can, the longer you keep the the person in the helicopter's like sights, the more points you get, and mm -hmm. then you can use it to call in cop cars and use those points to affect um, environmental effects. Like traffic jams or um, bring up those poles from the ground to stop them and things like that. Hmm. So that was kind of interesting. Um, we played a little more Battlefield with the netcode update. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a placebo or if it's real, but it does feel a little better. Um, so I guess I, I'd have to, we'd have to play a lot guess? more because a lot of the things it's supposed to fix are like getting shot around corners or behind cover. So stuff that you would kind of have to take as a total of a whole rather than like, you know, I played for probably three or four hours with the new update. It'll take over a longer period of time to see if it's really more effective. I mean, they show like a video where it's like 60% faster. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that's a simulated and I mean, it's not supposed to be simulated in their video, but we don't know what they're showing us. They're, you know, showing us real world or perfect examples where we have like real world examples to go on. So, right. Um, and I started playing uh, Pixel Junk Shooter Ultimate on the Vita. So even though I beat one and two, I'm going back through Ultimate, which is, there's a bunch of nice surprises. So if you've played through Pixel Junk 1 and 2 and feel like, oh, I'm not going to get Ultimate, it's just like a, you know, uh... Rehash? Not even rehash. It's it's not like they just took 1 and 2 and are giving, to, giving you both of them. It's actually, it feels different. I don't remember a whole lot from 1, but it feels... It feels Is that because it, it's been so long since you played, or...? Probably, but it feels different enough that... If you beat one when one came out, you should probably just get Ultimate. And plus, it's free on PS Plus anyway, so you get it for PS4 and Vita. Hmm. So you might as well, if you have a Vita, you might as well download it and play it, because it's, it's fun. Get a clip of your little dudes. And the lava and the water. The lava, the water, yeah. That's about it. Mostly just that. Okay. Shall we get on to the snippets? The pre-E3 show. Yes, starting. Starting when this is out, actually. Yes, actually. 
Uh, on to the snippets. You can finally officially use the Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller. Xbox 360. Xbox One <laughs> controller on your PC. Microsoft gave you the drivers. Um, don't expect to use it wirelessly, obviously, because there is no wireless dongle available yet. So you will still have to be tethered to your PC. But at least we can finally do it. Ta-da! Ta-da! That's a big ass snippet. Look, I cut down my snippets after you yelled at me, and yours got. You took mine. <laughs> we switched this week, apparently. You yelled at me, so I kept them all like, look, they're pretty short. I know. And this they're like week one and two I sentences. Flipped. I know. I switched them. All right, go. Um, so the man who owns the largest video game collection ever, according to Guinness ever. World, Guinness Book of World Re- Records, um, is selling it on Game Gavel due to some family needs. Um, the man is Michael Thomason. He's been collecting basically for more than 30 years. This is like the third time he's collected because he sold off his collection twice already. So for, apparently, like he sold off his collection the first time to buy like a Sega Genesis back in the day. And then he, um. Okay. So it wasn't like he sold like this giant collection three times. No. And then he had another collection that he started, but then he got a, like a, probably like a middle size collection and then sold that off to get married to pay for his wedding. So now this time he's, since that time he's collected over 11,000 games. Okay. And wow. consoles that I've never even heard of, like, that are very obscure, like, I, I've never even heard of before. Okay. Um, basically selling them all off. Like the Amiga CD32? Yeah, like, no, even... PCFX? Geez, I don't know, it's saw all kinds of weird Sinclair. ones. Sinclair? Um, so the auction still has seven days to go. The current bid is 98500 but the reserve price isn't met, and I would assume that the reserve price is probably seven or eight hundred thousand dollars, which is what his collection was worth a couple of years ago, like two thousand and thirteen, when they um, announced the world Who's record. Who's lowballing him? I I don't know, but he's, <laughs> he only has about I think there's only seventeen bids on there. I think because maybe Game Gavel isn't. I don't think he'd be better off just parting the damn thing out. Yeah, and, and he's the... got complete series of certain of he's got um, complete game sets of from the U.S. like of certain consoles. Consoles, yeah. I would just part like out the rare. Games and these are and... these are eleven thousand like titles that are not duplicates. So he's also got duplicates of stuff, but these are not duplicates. These are eleven thousand game plus games of. Okay. Different games and stuff. So, anyways, uh, still got seven days. Check it out if you're interested. Uh, yeah, we don't have enough money to afford that, but you know. Why don't you put this to the regular story? I don't know. You're a weirdo. It was a snippet. That was a whole story. That was not a whole story. Was so. No. After a long wait, Shovel Knight is finally coming to PC, Wii U, and 3DS on June 26th, 2014. I know you've been waiting for that one. Yes. For a while. Yes. Do you remember if you got it for PC or 3DS? I know you didn't get it for Wii U since we don't have one. I want to say I got it for 3DS, is what I voted for on um, Kickstarter. Okay. You should be getting that Because I wanted to... Uh, Play it on the go. Yeah. And I wanted the controls, as opposed to... I wanted to use, like, a you know, the D-pad and stuff, as, as opposed to... We have a controller for the PC. It's I know. The I know, but I... At the time, I wanted to take it on the go. Anyway, okay. shut it. <laughs> uh, Mario Kart 8 has made a huge start and helped drive Wii U sales, pun intended. Uh, it's first weekend out. Bad pun, I know. But I came with it on my own. Yeah, because I'm awesome. I'm sure so it sold uh, 1.2 million copies worldwide so far. Um, according to Nintendo of America CEO Reggie, uh, the early response to Mario Kart 8 demonstrates that the best days for the Wii U are still ahead. Uh, this milestone is a great place to start. So uh, the previous seven titles have sold a total of over 100 million units. A great place to start together. what? Buying a Wii U? Like they should have started with Mario Kart 8 when they launched the system? I guess. Is that what he's saying? <laughs> That's what it sounds like That's to me. Cor- this is well, a great place to start. I did. Um, I took one of the. Out a while. I took. I took one of those um, sentences out. Something about E3 and he's, you know, whatever they're announcing. A great way to start E3. I guess. Uh, great way to start sounds like they uh, kind of missed the boat. 
they kind of screwed up and now they're just trying to catch up at this point. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> that uh, wouldn't surprise me. Another long-awaited game, the spiritual XCOM strategy game Xenonauts has finally been completed. Um, it's going to be available at xenonauts.com. The game is still on early access on Steam, but the developer has said it's already feature complete. They're basically just nailing down whatever few bugs they have left. Um, so if you want it, you can get it at xenonauts.com. It's $19.99. And while it's still in early access, don't think that it's like a buggy mess. It's right. It's, it's not done. early early access. Yeah, it's, it's just it's done. So in um, about two weeks, they said it should be moving over to it's Steam like beta proper. instead of alpha. Yeah, it's like zero point nine yeah. instead of one point oh. Yeah. Uh, Terraria news, of course. Nothing complete without Terraria news. Uh, Terraria is coming to next gen cons uh, current gen consoles, PS4 and Xbox One later this year, according to the announcement by publisher 505 Games on its forum. Uh, the PS4 version is going to feature cross-play and cross-save functionality with the Vita, um, which launched last year in December and is currently free on PlayStation Plus through the end of June, I believe. You sure? Yep, because you were going to no, get weird. it for every me and I, surprise me, remember? Every time I look at it, it says it's not available on my Vita. You tell me you were going to get it for me and surprise me. I know, but it says it's not available. Yeah, it says that it's available. you own it? No, we own it on this on the shared PlayStation, not my PlayStation. Huh. I don't know. It says it's not available every time I go on the Vita. I thought it was just a bug because like, the store was updating, but I, mem I just realized that it happened the last time this came around. I don't know. So, anyway, players um, will have access to the 1.2 game update from the PC along with improved gameplay mechanics and graphical upgrades that uh, already arrived to the last gen consoles back last April. So is it in parity with the PC? No. Okay. Good right point. now uh, the PC is at a 1.3.4 update. Okay. And Good then, way to use your decimal points. Yes, they're going to have a, because they keep doing like many updates. Okay. Um, and then they're going to do a large fuller like last update which is going to be a 1.4 update okay uh and then they're working on they're going to still have like smaller updates but um so they're also working on terraria too what is the playstation and vita at 1.2 we they just ported the 1.2 content over um do you know if they said they're going like 1.2 to 1.4 because that makes sense I could see them doing that, yeah, but they haven't announced, they haven't said anything. I mean, uh, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 just got 1.2, and it had probably like a month or so ago, uh, and it had some problems because we were playing it, and uh, so we were waiting for it to patch, and they just released the patch, I think, last week, so okay. it's, it's still pretty new right. to the consoles anyway. Right. Free to play, previously only third person shooter loadout. Um, Such a funny looking game. <laughs> <It's> so <laughs> which is very Looney Tunes ish, I guess. It's yeah. like if Looney Tunes was crossed with Cinemax after 11 p.m. It's so like, yeah. there's a lot of gore. Like you could shoot somebody's guts like straight through them. So yeah, you uh, see there. Yeah. You see a hole in their stomach and their spinal column still there and like their guts inside of where their stomach would be. With blood um, gushing out everywhere, yeah, but it's like cartoony. Out. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like when, uh, when the demo man blows somebody up in Team Fortress, they got like a, you know, it's like a, an arm with like a little bit of a wrist and the cartoony bone coming out. It's kind of like that, yeah. only just more extreme, I guess. It's not like... More blood and, but it's like cartoony, it's not... It's no Sniper Elite. You're not seeing like an x-ray of a real skull and yeah. eyes popping and it's cartoony. brains blown out everywhere. So It's funny the, looking, not realistic. Right. It's third person, which some people don't really like because they say your character kind of gets in the way. The good thing about it is it is free to play in the good sense where only costumes and dances and stuff that affect the appearance of your character are pay everything else Rather so than... far seems to be uh skill based so to level up your weapon you'd have to do stuff in game so it just because somebody's a higher level than you it just means that they played longer it doesn't mean that they bought their way 
right. as far as everything I've seen. I haven't seen a way to cheat it but as far as I know. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. And since I didn't see it in the story, but I'm going to assume since Sony announced it that since it's free to play, that means you won't even need plus. Because they did say that free to play games will not require plus to play multiplayer. So there you go. If you have a PlayStation 4 and you want something free, hey, load it up. There you go. Check it out. Blow stuff up. Uh, the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is coming February 24th. You put January 24th, FYI, 2015, uh, after a recent delay. If you pre order the game on GOG.com, you'll get a digital copy of the board game and some other bonuses. Uh, there's also going to be a big physical collector's edition that's going to include an art book, steel case, game, medallion, and uh, Geralt figure. Uh, they released a new trailer that you can check out now. And uh, the if you pre-order it, I believe it also comes with their new board game, um, which is called Witcher Adventure Game, I think is what it's called. That? Did I say that? Twice? Yeah, you did. You said if you pre-order the game on GOG, you'll get a digital copy of the board game. Of the board game. Yeah, I did say that twice. Look at that. Sorry. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> anyway, speaking of the board game, <laughs> uh, there's going to be, there is a closed beta trailer available now, uh, and the game is slated to make its debut on PC and Mac later this year, and you can sign up for the beta testing on GOG.com slash Galaxy, which is... You stole my story. I have a GOG.com Galaxy story. I know. What? You didn't tell me you stole that story. I didn't steal the story. It's That's where you have to sign up for the beta of Witcher. My story is Witcher. Your story is actually them launching that platform. Okay. Or that service. But you missed something. What? You get a discount if you own Witcher 1 or 2. Oh, the two yeah. stories I looked at didn't say that. Yeah. If you went to the website, you'd notice. Yep. And that's not where you pre-order Witcher. What? Huh? Who? What do you mean? <laughs> it's like buy.witcher.com or something. But you can pre-order the game on GOG. Right. Right. Okay. So what are you talking about? And then the beta test for the board game is GOG.com slash Galaxy. Okay. I'll so check. how am I wrong? I'll check the links. I'm not I wrong. I don't know about that. I don't think GOG.com slash Galaxy has anything but a trailer. Last I looked this morning. I want to say I went on it and I, I didn't sign up for it, but I want to say it was there. Okay, we'll find out. Check. You're just mad that I stole your story. Check your stories. You're just mad I stole your story. <laughs> anyway, original Halo composer Marty O'Donnell has fired back at Bungie. Pew, pew. Um, he's going for unpaid benefits, double the amount of unpaid benefits to get some, uh, retribution. I don't know. I guess it wouldn't be retribution. He's like suing them, right? That's what I said. No, he said going after. Suing them for unpaid benefits. Going after does not necessarily... There's also other legal matters that are still in arbitration, so they haven't really decided what that is yet or told us about it. But it looks like he's going after the CEO of Bungie, I think. Done. Yeah, my snippets are short, unlike Patty Paragraph over here. <laughs> but you can't say that from last week. I can, and I did. No. I just said it. No. I said it right now. Uh, Rise, Son of Rome, for those of you playing that game, is getting some new DLC. Uh, the Moritori, Moritori, sure, pack. <laughs> I don't know if I said that right. Uh, <laughs> Moritori, the Mori Povich DLC? Moritori, T-U-R-I, Turi, Moritori pack. Uh, adds three new arenas for Gladiator Mode, Beacon, False Gods, and Revolution. Um, it also adds Survival no Mode, which gets you new content, um, the Forbidden Forest, and the Sulphur River stages. And then finally, um, Solo Mode with five arenas newly optimized for it, Beacon, Revolution, False Gods, Market, and Garden. Uh, you can pick it up now if you're a Season Pass holder, or you can buy it for $7.99. Market and Garden? Not Market Garden, because Market Garden is usually a World War II map in uh, most first-person shooters. 
Just no, they said different. five. They said five arenas, and if I put market garden together, then we're missing an arena on that story. So oh, that's weird. That could be. <laughs> they could have just left something out. I don't know. That's odd. Well, rise takes place in Rome. World War Two is way after that. That's what I was asking. Oh yeah. Because it's just funny that market and garden would come after each other, but market garden is a, a map. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Valve added a line to their early access FAQ stating that developers may be unable to finish their game and you should only buy it on early access if you're super duper Rice Krispie Treats excited to buy it. So... Disclaimer. If you're not super duper Rice Krispie Treats excited to buy it and you don't want like that awesome sugar rush feeling of playing something before everybody else and have it crashing to your desktop and banging your keyboard and throwing your PC out the window and all that stuff, just don't buy it. And, and don't, for it to come out completely. Don't yell at Steam or Valve if you buy it and then the developer says, uh, no more updates. This is probably in response to Towns. Yeah, but that was different. That was not an early access game. Probably in response to Towns. But there have been other early access titles or titles on Steam like Earth 24. 44, I think was the name of it, that were pulled. So, eh. Remember, early access means that. It's not done. Exactly. Uh, so, despite, I meant to say despite. So, Supposedly? <laughs> despite some reviews saying Tropical 4 uh, is better than the new 5, it hasn't stopped sales, um, with Calypso saying that they've had the most successful launch in the game series so far in the six digits, but they didn't specifically say how many they sold. Uh, the game has reached... Um, the sales reach include uh, UK, Germany, and the US, I believe. Is what it is. The sales reach? Well, I... <laughs> what? I kind of almost repeated myself again. It's a digital game. I it's, think I wrote it twice. It's not worldwide? <laughs> I meant to say that the UK and Germany had more sales than the other places. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. I'm just all over the place today. Uh, anyway, the game is out now on PC and is headed to the Xbox 360 and Mac sometime this summer and PS4 this fall. Yeah, that's weird. That was the weird one. That's, it doesn't list Xbox One, right? Correct. That's so weird. I wonder why Correct. Tropical 5 got a bad rap. It's got multiplayer. They say that the, that the... I mean, I haven't played it yet, but they say 4 is just a better, more rounded game than the 5th one is. Okay. Yeah, sometimes it's not all roses and like they tried to do too many di or they tried to do too much with it or too many kitchen sink effect. Yeah. Could add too many things. Yeah. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Goat Simulators 1.1 patches live. Woohoo! That means you can now wreck it up with your friends in multiplayer, and there's a whole new map to explore and headbutt people and use your sticky tongue to grab things and twirl around your head. There's new goats. And there's even multiplayer modes that capture the flag. There's more than one goat. Multiplayer goats. <laughs> you can form a posse of goats. Go terrorize towns. Does it have many players? You can do handstands. You can ride a bicycle. You can do parkour. Oh, yeah. It's what everybody wants. Listen. This game is like the most ridiculous game ever. It's amazing it got made. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> and it's actually fun. If you want more of Batman this year, you should probably go buy Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate because Black Batman, Black Man, <laughs> Batman Arkham Knight. <laughs> what did you just say? I don't know. It's Blackgate, not Black Man. <laughs> Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate. Batman Arkham Knight has been pushed back until 2015. So again, we lost another game this year. We are a pair this week, I tell you. It's your fault. You, <laughs> I was perfectly fine until you came along. I rub off on you, I'm sorry. <laughs> Affect my...
brain like a parasite. <laughs> That's what marriage is. <laughs> Go away. Uh, Telltale Games PR director teased a surprise announcement on Twitter this week for The Walking Dead, uh, which turned out to be a pinball table for the Zen Studios pinball game. Did we ever get the copies from PAX? Yes, oh. I did. I didn't look at my email address. Um, the table follows the journey of Lee and Clementine from the first season of the game, uh, going from one place to the next, trying not to be eaten by zombies, obviously. Um, like this series, uh, the table is going to feature, uh, choice-driven gameplay, which is the first time ever in... What? Yes, the first time ever in a pinball game, they are going to have choice-driven gameplay. How that's going to work, I'm not quite Pinball's sure. Pinball's hard enough by itself. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, the table will come to all the Zen Studios games this summer with a playable appearance coming to E3. Oh, I want choices in my pinball. I just want a good pinball table. I just want, yeah, I know. Weird. Weird. Some more games were saved from the GameSpy shutdown this week, Unreal Tournament 3 and all three Stalker games. Uh, Epic unreleased a new executable for Unreal Tournament 3, and the developers who are left at GSC Game World put together their own dedicated server so you can keep on stalking in the desolate Russian nuclear fallout landscape place of awesomeness and despair. Got it. On to the stories this week, even though Carrie's snippets were basically stories. Not always, not mm -hmm. exactly. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Are you's Awakening? Um, is a pretty cool game that's done with pencils and like watercolors and stuff. So like Okami. Yeah. Um, it's done with pencils and watercolors, and then it's touched up digitally. Um, it's coming to PS3 and PS4 this summer. They launched a new trailer. Um, they said that it would be a good port to PS Vita, but it's not... Announced? It's not official, and it's not... I don't know that they're actually working on that right now, but um, a lot of people say that it would uh, be good that way. Wouldn't it so? Well, it's like Okami. I mean, Okami is just drawing stuff, so PS Vita has touched me. Makes sense. Yes. Forza Horizon 2 is officially official. Officially official. The awesome arcade racing game from the spin-off, I guess, from the serious Forza series that was way, I thought was way better than original Forza. However, they're running on two different engines. So last gen and current gen. The Xbox One edition of Forza Horizon 2 will obviously be running on the Forza 5 engine. While the Xbox 360 version will be running on the original Forza Horizon 1 engine. What that means is probably any screenshots and video you see will be from the current gen console and not the last gen console. And they'll probably like sweep the last gen console under the rug like, hey, don't look, don't go looking for screenshots. We probably won't publish any because <laughs> we're mean. Um, hopefully both come out really good if and if Titanfall is anything to go on, it could be kind of rocky. I heard some kind of mixed things about Titanfall, though I haven't played Xbox 360 version since I played on PC, but I heard it wasn't it wasn't the worst port, but it wasn't... It felt wrong, but considering Forza Horizon 2 is building off the Horizon 1 engine, I'm hoping as long as they don't push it, it should be fine. Um, it also runs at 30 frames a second, but don't freak out because Forza Horizon 1 ran at 30 frames a second. So you already have that going for you. It won't, even on the Xbox One, it won't run at 60 like Forza 5, from what they said. And finally, it is moving from the original's Colorado setting to Southern Europe. And okay. it will be another festival type atmosphere, which is fine with me. Uh, that's, I, I kind of like that. It was kind of fun. Had more personality, let's say. Had more to it, I guess? Yeah. You know, you're in like a party atmosphere, and there's little challenges, and you raced biplanes and hot air balloons, and it was fun. Forza, and I've realized Gran Turismo is this way too, so I don't think it's just Forza, but it's just so dry. It's like, oh, look, I'm going to race around Nuremberg track again. Wee! 
<laughs> I know people love it, but I'm just like, I just, uh, kind of get bored. I gotta with do it. 40 laps, and I gotta make sure that I beat this time, and do my shocks, and blah blah. blah, and blah. Just put a spoiler on my car, and let me make the engine max, and I just want to drift around corners and have fun. <laughs> Too much work for the other one. Sorry. So, Angry Birds is getting Angry Birds Star Wars 2, Rise of the Clones. Um, it's Clone a new Wars? update, which uh, adds 40 new levels across the planets of Coruscant and Kamino. Um, Coruscant. Coruscant, sure. I don't know what the other one is, because I think you butchered it. Kamino. I don't know what that is. That might be from the cartoon. Okay, sorry. I butcher everything. Uh, anyways, the <laughs> update is available to download now on the iOS platforms, heading to Android devices soon, and uh, it's also going to be available as a PC download, but not, um, didn't say when, I don't think. Um, they call her the butcher of Mean Street. Butcher. Yes. And then let's see, the other Angry Birds news is Angry Birds Stella. Uh, we got some new screenshots of them. That's a game? Yes, it's the quote-unquote girl version. I thought Stella was the, uh... Oh. I was thinking of the web series, but that's a whole other thing. No, it's got, it's this. It's I Stella got, and her friends. I got my Angry Birds confused. Sorry, there's too many. Stella of them. gets her groove back. Her and her friends are, are going out to, uh... <laughs> the birds are grooving over there. They're are they? grooving. Holy so, geez. Uh, they said that it's going to come back. It's going to come out in September. Um, it's not too terribly different, but it's got you know Stella and the girls. Um, that's you know that's pretty much the difference, I guess. Let's see. There's going to be. There is there is a new entry or new thirteen episode cartoon series. That's coming, but it says that it's um, in November. For Stella or Angry Birds proper? It's so uh, weird we have offshoots. We have to say Angry Birds proper. There's now. no u news yet on other Stella entries, but a new 13-episode cartoon series is confirmed for the Toons TV and other services in November. Okay. Interesting. So. And books, apparently. Books are coming. And miniature Stella... Um, like figures or something. And also. bed sheets. Yeah, I don't know. And figures. <laughs> and soda and drinks. It's more Angry Birds stuff because, you know, we don't have enough. What did you do? I don't know. I opened a tab instead of closed it. Yeah. Going nuts over there. <laughs> Is that your next story? Yes. Okay. Let's check it. So, even though Carrie ruined it from before, GOG Galaxy. Sorry. GOG Galaxy, as the trailer says, is a Steam-like optional client by our friends over at GOG, which will have friends lists, achievements, automatic updates, chat with no software activation. So don't think that GOG is moving into Valve territory where you constantly have to have it running to play your games. Your games, just like they were previously on GOG, will be completely separate. You can always download the executable, run it, and play it without the client. They're hinting that you might be able to run GOG Galaxy and just like how Steam lets you add outside of Steam games, GOG Galaxy will allow that too, obviously since the games are um, downloadable outside of the client. That kind of makes sense since the whole thing is like, you can run it, you don't have to run it, it doesn't need to be online, it can be online. If you want it to be online, they're giving you, you are in the driver's seat of all the options behind GOG Galaxy. So it's just another game client to run in your start menu, in your taskbar, basically. Just so you know, I feel no sympathy for giving away your story because you give away mine all the time. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> However, there is going to be automatic patching. So that'll be good if you notice uh, GOG does do a lot of updates to their games. So while you constantly have to check back to the website to see if your game got a patch or an update, now you can get those patches delivered directly to you as long as it's running. Um, it's coming soon. Looks pretty cool. But like I said, it's just another 
another client to run in your taskbar. And most people are clamoring for some kind of Uber all-in-one client to run all of these things, but I doubt that'll ever happen. They have Raptor, but yeah. Playfire, I think, is another one. Sure. Which, I wish they could all just consolidate. The biggest thing would be consolidating all your friends lists. But I don't know how... I don't think they can do that because I don't think most apps allow you to interact that way. But that would be the big thing, is if you can just consolidate all your friends from PlayStation, Xbox, blah, 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 Steam, Origin, and then have it auto-populate. Like, if you add one friend here, just have, like, a little auto-populate. Sure. Uh, Altier Verona Plus is coming to the West. It was, uh, it's been out for, it's been out in Japan for a while. Did you play one of these before? I've played something uh, at Altier, but this is a different game or a different part in the series, maybe. Um, it's got a bunch of new trailers. It's um, alchem Alchemical Adventures is what they call it. Alchemy? So Alchemy. But the alchemical. 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 Yes, I don't, I don't know. Those. Alchemical? Sure. <laughs> Why don't they just say Alchemy? So, I don't know. Well, they got to make up new words. I don't know, but it uh, it has a gameplay trailer. It's got a battle gameplay um, trailer. It's got a synthesis trailer where it shows you actually making the ingredients. Um, it looks like it has a very extensive... Making the ingredients. Putting the ingredients no, I'm here. sorry. Like alchemy, like making potions, stuff like that. Sorry. Making battle potions and stuff. Um, <laughs> it seems to the trailer has... Um, like a huge menu list and stuff like options and how you want it to be and what you want to put in there, you know, to make the different items or potions and stuff. So is it um, more like trial and error? Like you really are like a wizard, like putting I, I don't know. It bubbling doesn't brews say, and stuff together and, you know. It doesn't really say in the trailer. Eye of newt and hair of bat. And poof. Okay, if you're going to do that poem, then you poof. should at least do it correctly. No. Anyway. <laughs> Eye of Cyborg. <laughs> no. Testicle of Hitler. So, I don't know. It looks pretty cool. Basically, it looks like a game that I definitely would play. I, I don't know with the menus, though. It looks to be like a lot of menus. Like, I'd get annoyed and just be like, okay, 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 okay. I just want to make the damn thing. Well, how else are they going to show you, like, 7,000 different ingredients? And it's like you can, like, put the... You can tell what you want the quality to be, the defense, how much you want it to cost. Like, like, sometimes I'm like, okay, I just want to make the damn thing. So we'll see how that kind of plays out. But Maybe there'll be a demo. I don't know. You started the trailer. I did by accident. Good job. <laughs> Ho Hokum is coming Ho with its unique art style. Uh, it's got vector art that basically look like doodles come to life. That's Hokum. The player is a flying worm-like creature with many, many colorful creatures uh, throughout the world. The game is a more laid back exploration experience, so don't expect it to necessarily hold your hand. Don't be expecting to get a whole backstory of the world up front. You're pretty much just supposed to play the game and let it unfold as you play the game and let everything play out the way it needs to play out. Just do it. So it's don't very. Don't question it, just do it. It's not realistic at all, as you can see from the trailer. It is a very video game video game. So it is something that you can't do in real life ever. I like games like this because it's something unique and different and it's not brown military shooter number 700. It's not scary guy 42. It's not assassin guy or fantasy person. It's literally like living in somebody's art, which is very abstract and if you watch the trailer on how they came up with it, it it's kind of interesting how they drew the character and it sounds like they were talking on the phone and kind of going back and forth between like what ideas and doodles they had or whatever. But then they wouldn't tell the animator anything. They would say, okay, here's our final drawing. Animate it. And then they would go back and see it and he would animate it a completely different way than what they were thinking of. Mm -hmm. And they were like, wow, that's cool. Now we have to come up with something on how to get that character into the game. <laughs> and then they would figure out a way to get the character in the game and like all this That's stuff. That's kind of cool. That's so really it's different. very abstract. It's very cool. Um, it's coming August 12th to the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and 
PlayStation Vita. So definitely check it out if you have one of those systems and watch the trailer and you know, I think they said it's taken like six years or whatever they've been working off and on on the game, so but Wow. Just the it's very colorful and it looks fun. It just looks like, you know, something you can just play. Don't, okay. don't worry about being sad or angry. You just play the game. <laughs> very cool. Uh, so Costa Rican development house Green Lava Studios mm -hmm. is uh, bringing their game Phoenix Rage, which is a hardcore 2D platformer to the PS4. Hardcore. Is what they announced. Are you hardcore. I'm hardcore. Do you can lift, bro. So um, inspirations for the game come from Sonic the Hedgehog, Hellboy, and SWAT Cats. Um, SWAT Cats. Yes. So the main character phoenix has like a dashing ability okay so kind of you know kind of with the fast speed of sonic the hedgehog um and then as far as hellboy and swat cats that comes from the game's art direction which is uh full of bright colors heavy shading um it looks pretty cool it looks like you're probably gonna have a lot of trial and error to get through the areas the areas because there's like a lot of enemies or enemies can kind of follow you kind of like that uh, jerk ghost from Mario or that stupid the sun boo? face. Yeah. Sun face? From Mar Super Mario 2. He's not a sun face. What is he? I don't know. What is he? He's kind of like a yin yang. I don't know. He's not a yin yang. He's got two He's different not... colors on each side. Nah. He's got one color on one side, one color on the other side. Nah. So the flying anyways... face guy when you pick up the key? Yeah. He's not a sun face. He's more like a. Like an opera mask. It's not a sun face. I don't know. That's that's the first thing that came out of my mouth. Sun face. I thought you were talking <laughs> about the sun that has a face. No. No. From, that's from Super Mario 3. No. No. Uh, anyways, this is the first game on PS4 for the developer. Um, it is supposed to reach the game, the platform in fall. So uh, the trailer looks pretty cool. Uh, but like I said, it looks a lot like trial and error until you learn how to get through the levels and stuff. That's not too bad. Yeah, it's pretty cool though. We didn't expect this and you probably didn't either, but there is a new Homefront game coming, Homefront The Revolution. Uh, you can check out the trailer. It is a more open world experience, unlike the previous corridor shooter-esque first one. Kind of looks like Infamous Second Son, which isn't a bad thing to say about a game because Infamous Second Son has been regarded as one of the best looking PlayStation 4 games to date, so hey, you got that going for you. Uh, it's running off the CryEngine 3, which means it should look like Infamous Second Son, if not better. Like, graphics should really stand out. And it's coming to PC, Linux, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, so only current gen, which should mean if it fails or has frame rate problems then you can't blame it being a shitty port or them dumbing it down because of last gen the game's moving from san francisco to philadelphia so korea has basically already taken over even though the last game i guess you were winning but you haven't won because there's a big shootout on the uh, golden gate bridge at the end of the first game so you're part of the resistance group and you and up to three other players can play co-op and form your own resistance faction, which I thought was kind of neat. That's um, pretty cool. Usually you don't, I don't think there's too many games where you can form factions in co-op. Usually it's co-op through a, you co-op through the storyline and it would just be one character in the cutscenes. Mm -hmm. But the way they describe this, I'm wondering if they've redone some of the stuff. I'm hoping they've redone some of the stuff to make it more co-op more integrated into the story that'd be kind of interesting but the open world thing sounds cool but you never know it could be complete crap who knows <laughs> <laughs> we'll give up. it just came out of nowhere like homefront 2 like homefront 1 wasn't bad but it wasn't 100 percent memorable either it was just kind of eh, it's homefront it's red yeah. dawn yeah you know, whatever so, a new game called Legions of Ashworld is coming. Um, Why did I call this one Sons for you? I have no idea. Okay. Not quite sure where you got that one from. Go ahead. Speaking of Sons. 
uh, <laughs> the game is uh, basically divided into, the world is divided into tiles, and uh, leaders navigate from a first-person perspective, uh, moving armies into strong strategic positions, attempting to conquer, defend, and intercept. First person. Um, yes, first person. Huh. It was, uh, the trailer looks, it's different. It's, um, I don't know, not what I was expecting, but apparently it's got, it had heavy influence from a game called uh, Lords of Midnight, which is... Ah, yes. Yeah, released like 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, the developer he just died too. Yeah, uh, the developer says that the biggest differences between the two games is that um, battles occur in game time, uh, like other actions. Uh, so it doesn't like your turn doesn't just necessarily end upon entering a battle. Okay. Um, there's a standard sister. There's a standard system of items and inventory with transferring. Uh, Item-based food and supplies with influence per person is uh, per person, not per lord. So the bigger the army, the more food supply you're obviously going to have to have. Right. That makes, um, sense. that makes sense. Yeah. Animals can move over the night, so um, they don't just stay dormant, which means, you know, if you have a lone scout or something like that and it finds, you know, an animal, then the animal is going to obviously attack it because it's by itself. Okay. As opposed to like a whole army. Like, it sure. might run away from a whole army, but if it only sees one person, it might go after it kind of thing. Okay. Uh, and the wizards use lore powers. Lore powers? Yes, is what they say. What's a so. lore power? I'm not sure. It doesn't, it doesn't specify, Elaborate. and it doesn't really, it doesn't really show it in the trailer. Um, but the game is seeking votes on Steam Greenlight and uh, can actually buy the game now from the developer for $9.99, which is in pounds. So that's probably, like... 14 or 15 bucks US. Did you watch the trailer? I did. Could you play it even though it's first person? Yes, because it's more of like a board game and you're like moving the world, I guess. Okay. To me, is, is what I. It's not like a first person shooter or something where you're like changing camera angles and things like that. So, um,. You like it showed how you like move the mouse and it moves you forward and it moves you like into like a town and then you can just like click on to enter like the market and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it looks like something I could play. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. NECA is at it again. They are now releasing a Rocky Balboa figure for their classic 8 bit series. This time it's from the Sega Master System Rocky game. More than likely it's looked to be from the title screen of the game, not from the actual box art. It kind of looks weird. Um, I bought all the other ones because they were all cool. And, you know, Jason Voorhees had the weird purple color scheme. Uh, Freddy had an odd color scheme. And Robocop was really blue in his color scheme because they couldn't really do steel. Mm -hmm. So that was all reasons to get those and they, they look kind of you know interesting um but rocky balboa just looks like he has painted on muscles <laughs> like literally okay. like somebody took like <laughs> almost like the whiteout brush and you know how when you paint with the whiteout brush it's like blah, like the lines aren't straight yeah. and it's just like weird that's literally what it looked like it looks like somebody dipped like the whiteout brush and slightly gray paint and like painted muscles onto Rocky Balboa. Kind of like if you put on one of those fake muscle t-shirts. Not even because those lines are kind of straight. These are just like <laughs> But what's weird is NECA already has a line of Rocky figures from I think 1, 2, and 3 and they look really good. They're really detailed and the Rocky has like a black eye in one of them and they look like what you would expect like a Rocky real figure. Rocky yeah. figure to look like. The one they're putting out here doesn't look 8-bit and it doesn't look digitized it just and there's like nothing crap. wrong about the coloring from the game like He has like a flag draped over him and his arms like out and It just looks like a normal figure that somebody painted really badly on I mean <laughs> like somebody's at a home like a like they 
yeah. did a, they got one of the figures and they tried to paint it themselves as opposed to like professional yeah, painting. I, nobody can figure out why they're doing this. <laughs> I mean, granted the picture isn't final yet, so we don't know like if this was just like a quick mock-up somebody did to send like a proof in and they got leaked or whatever. Because mm -hmm. it does say like production not final or whatever on the thing. Um, I hope but, it looks better than that. But I can't, I can't figure... And it's not an NES game. It's a Sega Master System game. So does that mean they're going to change the box art? Because the box art was all NES games. Where you had like the classic uh, cover mm -hmm. from the game. So if they, do, if they do like a whole Master System thing, that's fine. But I don't know. There's, there's nothing like... I don't see a reason to buy it. Because it's not weird enough. <laughs> It, it like it like doesn't. That's, that's so odd for me. But it doesn't like stand. It doesn't say. stand out enough because the other ones like people look at it and go, "That's cool." It's not weird enough. It, you can't buy it. It looks interesting because it's different. It's not a typical Jason Voorhees figure. It's not a typical Freddy figure. It's not a typical Robocop figure. They look. But even though they don't look typical, they don't look bad. Right. Like. Like if somebody if you took it out of the package and just put it somewhere and somebody had no idea what it was, they would go. What's wrong with that figure? And then you tell them, oh, that's how they colored it in the NES one. They go, oh, cool. Somebody looked at this one and they'd be like, what's wrong with that figure? And you're like, that's from the Sega Did Master you System. It <laughs> they'd be like, I don't understand. He doesn't, doesn't think, like, I don't know. Hopefully that isn't the final production and it looks better. I don't know. I'm still debating if I should just pre order it anyway. I guess you're a weirdo. It's only 20 bucks. It's better than the Jason one was, right? Well, the Jason one was expensive because he was a Comic-Con exclusive. Ah, that's why. The other ones you were able to get normally through, like, Toy Wiz and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, Tetris just celebrated 30 years. This, uh... It's a long time taking a dump playing yeah. Tetris. Mm-hmm. Celebrated 30 years, and Ubisoft... Uh, is re launching a new game called Tetris Ultimate. I have an issue with this. Why? There's already been that style of gameplay with the four column Tetris thing. Well, this is four players. Yeah, it's already happened. Four players, six game modes? Yeah. Has it? Yeah. I remember two, I don't remember yep. four. So really, it's not anything new. And this game just... You just totally stole my story away, and we should just move on. You can still talk about it, but I don't... <laughs> they're calling it Tetris Ultimate, but... Do your story, and I'll, I'll see if I hear anything that I've never heard before. Okay, so... It's got four players, uh, six game modes, Marathon Battle, Power Up Battle, Ultra, Endless, and Spirit. Um, it is coming to current gen consoles this summer and PC later in the year. Um, let's see, he's going to show it off at E3 next week. Okay. That's pretty much all they mention in it. What was the last mode? Spirit mode? Spirit, yes. It's probably the only thing I haven't heard about that. Spirit. Yes. I've heard battle mode. I've heard power up mode. Yeah, and the guy who made it, um, Alexi, bless you, um, is going to be there. His last name is not bless you. <laughs> it's the original guy. Yes, the original guy who made the textures is going to be at E3 with Ubisoft showing it off. No, I cannot pronounce his name, and that's why okay. I say bless you, because I'm not even going to try. It's tiny text. P-A-J-I-T-N-O-V? Uh-huh. Pajadinov? Alexi Pajadinov? Unless in that country they don't pronounce J's that way. I don't know. It was owned by the USSR for a time too. I don't know. I don't know why they're calling it Tetris Ultimate. Well, okay. I'm guessing they're probably calling it Tetris Ultimate to get people to buy it. It's like Ultimate Tetris, but there's already been so many. It's got all the different modes and now it's like There's already been so many together. other Tetrises, Tetrises, Tetronomos. <laughs> I mean... And now we straddle the line between coming soon and out now. Hitman Go is out now on the Android device. It was previously out only on iOS, and they said it's coming soon. 
If you don't know, it is an actual good representation of taking a property you would never think that would make it to a tablet or phone and turning it into something cool because it has a tilt shift, almost board game miniature perspective of you being Agent 47 and moving your little piece around the level. There is 68 levels and it's $4.99 and you can pick it up on Google Play or iOS uh, if you choose, but you should have probably already picked it up for iOS because it's been out for a while. And they also announced coming soon was Hitman Sniper, which is coming to Android and iOS this fall. Um, this, if you'll remember, pre-ordering Hitman... What was the name of it? I want to say Evolution, but it's not Evolution. Whatever the last Hitman game to come out was. I can't remember. <laughs> I beat that one. I can't remember what it was. Whatever the last Hitman game to come Obviously out was. Obviously didn't leave a lasting impression on you. It was a Hitman game. <laughs> they had a sniper challenge for as a pre-order bonus. This is basically taking that sniper challenge and moving it into mobile devices. That's kind of a good fit. There's a bunch of shooty first-person games on tablets and basically just move your reticle and... Now you'll just be moving a sniper scope, probably zooming in, zooming out with pinch zoom and taking out targets by tapping on them. So since this is supposed to probably be high on a perch in some like clock tower or whatever, you won't, there won't be a need for a lot of movement. Right. So, uh, you know, I could, I could see why they ported that over to to mobile. I mean, it's not... I like what they did with Hitman Go. I like the fact that it's a basically a board game of the Hitman universe, mm -hmm. and you're like a little board game Agent 47. Right. Um, the Hitman Sniper is just a traditional like, hey, we can totally just port this over because it's easy touchscreen, you know, controls, and probably won't take that long. So, but yeah, they gotta make their money, so. Yeah, well, you know. It's not, it's not the worst thing. As long as it doesn't have, like, stupid microtransactions or garbage like that, it should be fine. Yeah. Cool down. It's going to take you four hours to reload your gun. Yeah. <laughs> come back in a while. Yeah, come back. <laughs> and click on this trailer and this, this ad. Uh, Double Finds, new game, Costume Quest 2. Got some new screenshots that came out. Okay. Which um, shows off the, the twins, obviously, are coming back to Trick or Treat. Um, now it's set in the Bayou, French Quarter. Is Bayou Billy there? No, we have to drive the Jeep. <laughs> no. Um, let's see. There's a, obviously going to be a bunch of NPCs that are going to assign side quests. Mm -hmm. Um, there's going to be jazz music filling the air because, you know, French Quarter. Okay. Um... Let's see, it also showed off how the combat system is going to be altered a little bit. It's going to be deeper and juicier battle system according to Devil Find. Um, juicier, like those juice things that explode in your mouth when you bite in them? Like the gushers? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean that it's going to be harder, it just says it's going to be So does more it take place it. like a year after the first one? They say it takes, a, it takes place pretty much right... I would assume a year after because it's, you know, again, trick-or-treating, but it says it kind of just starts up where the last one finishes or something. Are they still trick-or-treating from last year? I don't know. So they say it's going to be a little bit different as far as um, with the action, like it's almost going to be like Super Mario RPG based where you could um, you could press a button and time tits. Okay. So if you do the time tit right, you'll double whack them instead of... Double whack them. Princess, when she had the frying pan, double whack him. Once to the side of the head, once to the top. It's the best. It's the best time. Love that game. Anyways, uh, there's going to be <laughs> coming to PC, Xbox One, Xbox 360, PS4, PS3, Wii U, Mac, and Linux. Holy crap. Um, yeah, there's going to be lots of... I think the of, other one came to all the platforms. All the platforms, too, so. yeah. And there's going to be lots of costumes, of course. Um, it is called Costume Quest. Well, yeah. You only get one costume in Costume Quest. Yes, yes. That would be dumb. So, I don't know. I, I'm assuming that they're going to be new costumes, not just the old ones that well, they had they before. they grew from last year. You can't fit in your old costume anymore. That, well, unless you're my niece and she doesn't grow. Unless mom ran out of money and you have to just... <laughs> 
she's get had like pillow the same, sack and she's had the same costume for like four years now because she just she's so tiny. Get that pillow sack and cut the holes back in it. So, anyways, I I enjoyed playing Costume Quest. I can't play it for a long time because it kind of does make me sick sometimes. Um, because it's windy. Yeah, but I'm looking forward to seeing. Because it's like a little big planet one. to you, right? Because of the yeah, the depth and stuff. Like I love, I like playing the game, but I can't play it for very long. Okay. Battlefield Hardline got an official trailer. Woo! So EA has stopped. Um, EA. 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 Like EA. <laughs> EA has finally said yes. It's coming out. Here's forty-four seconds of trailer. 44 seconds. Oh, yeah. Wait for E3, you bitches who spoiled our fun. Um, if you didn't know, Battlefield Hardline is Cops and Robbers, a.k.a. Payday 2 in the Frostbite 3 engine. It looks good. It looks like Need for Speed the Run or the single-player versions of Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 with lots of things blowing up. Um... I don't know. It's kind of neat. There's already a digital deluxe version and a normal version up for pre-order on Origin for $69.99 or $59.99. It's coming to last gen, current gen, and PC. Of course, they have to maximize their money. Of course. It's made by Visceral Games, who previously did Dead Space 3. Yep, I think it's Dead Space 3. Um, I'm interested to hear more about this. A lot of people are kind of thinking that Dice is peeing in their Cheerios, but, you yeah. know, I, if this game was just called Hardline, I think people would be more accepting of it, but they also have to realize that the Battlefield name brings with it a bunch of people who will just buy it, sight because unseen. It's, right, because it's Battlefield. mom goes to the store and knows that she bought her son Battlefield 4 last year, and his birthday's coming around again, she's going to buy him Battlefield Hardline, even if he doesn't ask for it, because mm -hmm. she knows he wants it, just like Call of Duty. So there's that part of it. The other part of it is we got Battlefield Bad Company and Battlefield Bad Company 2, and those were great. And people thought they were going to be like the worst thing ever. Right. But, of course, those were funny as shit. And this does not look like it is, has any humor in it whatsoever. Sorry. It's more serious, obviously, Cops and Robbers. Um, you know, Didn't we talk about this last week? We did, but the trailer finally got released. The last week, all the leaked trailers kept getting pulled. Oh, that's right. This is the official trailer. Yes. The last trailers were supposedly six months ago or whatever, or leaked footage from six months ago. Mm -hmm. um, this is now an official trailer, which they're not saying how old the footage is, but... Right. It, it looks good. It looks... I, I would... I'll play it. I hope there is more to it. I hope they learned a lot from Payday. Payday kind of set the blueprint. Mm -hmm. already and then payday 2 set the blueprint already so they've already had those two things to work from and they can go from there they can do a lot of cool stuff still with the whole cops and robbers theme right so as long as it is more fleshed out and dynamic and that was one of the complaints with payday is you couldn't be the cops you could only always be the robbers right so now you can be both sides um so know. why didn't they just make it a payday game instead of Battlefield? Uh, Overkill owns the payday license oh. and does not use the Battlefield engine, nor has destructibility in their engine. This will bring that bring destructibility to. I mean, they're going to tone it down like they did between the bad company, so it's not going to be fully destructible. It's going to be set pieces, basically. Mm -hmm. Fantasia Music Fantasia. Evolved finally has a true release date of October 21st, 2014 for the Xbox One and 360. Also has um, a list of some songs that were announced. Okay. Uh, Depeche Mode, Enjoy the Silence, Drake, Take what? Care. Huh? These are the games. Okay. Or these are the names of the, these are the songs. Okay. Yes. I'm confused. Uh, Tchaikovsky's the, night, uh, the Nutcracker Medley. Okay, that makes sense. That Yeah, of Fantasia, yeah. Sure. Uh, Police Message in a Bottle. All right. Uh, MIA Ganglang. Uh, oh. Gulang. Uh, Gulang. Yeah. And The Who, The Real Me. Um, Weird. Uh, is like part of the list released. And then they also announced um, 
a partner apprentice called Scout, uh, which is a girl. Does he do? Oh. It's a girl. Boink. Her name is Scout. Boink. She's a girl. She's, Does she have a uh, bat and she hits people and say boink? No, but apparently she's a talented but impatient apprentice uh, that works alongside you to fight the force called the noise. Which is what you're fighting in the world. Um, she's fully animated and voiced. Um, she so you, helps kick off the story. Are you old people? Turn that noise down. Turn it down. I don't know, but in the trailer it shows like, I don't know, radishes or something that you're fighting. Yeah, I saw the trailer, and the trailer <laughs> did not sell me on this game at it's, all. It's, I, I don't understand it's weird. it. It's weird. I really don't it, understand it, it now. It nothing, or has nothing to do with Fantasia. Like, Fantasia didn't, I don't remember Fantasia having vegetables in it. Well, here's what I thought. I kind of had always thought that when we went on that tour about Fantasia, and they said that, when Disney made it, he wanted it to be like this evolving thing with music and interactivity, or not interact, but the surround sound that he never got, and like he had all these ideas that right. were never fleshed out. Right, and then he passed away before they ever got... I thought maybe they were kind of going for that vibe, like it wasn't going to be Fantasia proper that we know, it was going to be like a furthering of technology and music and stuff. Right, because it was about the music, he wanted people to enjoy the classics, and he wanted to have the animations and stuff match right the music and with the with the surround sound and oh yeah I, yeah but i don't see any of the, the 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 bare minimum part i saw that even comes close to that is the part of the trailer where they're swiping the things right which is the, the, like, towards the end of the trailer the cones or whatever they're right. like coming in and you have to swipe and you're, in right. certain uh I guess almost like your conductor yeah. And you're conducting the notes and it's like on a, the... And it's like a clock. So they come in at different angles and you have to swipe the angles to get right. the, the things out. I mean, that part was kind of... That part looked okay. I, I don't understand why they've got a neighborhood full of vegetables, singing vegetables, a turnip and a beat that have their own vocal tracks, apparently. Um, and yeah, I didn't understand. And if you move between them, if you, they make different sounds... I, I don't know. I I want to like this game. I really, really want to like this game. I want to love this game. And I want to love, like, what they're trying to do. And they're making it very hard. Very hard to do. Like, I think they could have done, I don't know, so much different, so much better. I, I, I guess we'll see once it comes out in October. But I, I, like, cannot wrap my head around this game. I don't know. I mean, I remember I was playing the Fantasia Golf and... Like, even that had the music and, like, had uh, riddles and stuff that went through the went through the, the movie, if you remember. No, I don't remember. You did, like, had little riddles and stuff that you would read them before you did the golf course. I don't remember that. Yeah. It's just weird. It's yeah, not what I, I expected at all. No, it's weird. Weird, weird, weird. It's very awkward. Yes. So Dead Rising 3 is coming to PC. Woohoo! I don't know why, because this seems like a move for Microsoft to not sell Xbox One consoles. I mean, I want it for PC. Don't get me wrong. I'm excited that it's coming to PC. <laughs> I can get it on PC without having to buy an Xbox One. But as He prefers PC. <laughs> but the business sense of porting your exclusive to PC while your console is not doing all that well or not, doing not, not well. number one or I don't right. know. The way Microsoft makes their console sales sound, they sound like they're sluggish. So, I'm guessing something probably ran out with Capcom's e exclusive license to to do it, or Microsoft's exclusive right to have uh, Dead Rising Three probably ran out. But eh. so it's coming to Steam. We're gonna get Steam achievements, Steam Cloud, Steam trading cards, global leaderboards, full game controller support, and keyboard and mouse support. They said you can switch on the fly. Um, there are a couple other games like this and they typically work seamlessly. Basically what happens is, is if you pick up the controller and you press a button, it'll switch all the button prompts to the controller button. If you click your button on a mouse or press a key on the keyboard, it'll switch all the mm -hmm. button prompts to the keyboard. So that's what they mean when they say seamless between. You don't have to really go into options and switch between them or anything like that. It's coming summer 2014. There is two player co-op listed. 
and they do mention it, but they don't mention if it's online or local. I have a hard time believing it will be local only co-op, but I wouldn't put it past them or, you know, there's a possibility it could be locked to local player only considering it doesn't say, I didn't read anywhere where it said online co-op. It just said one to two players. Mm -hmm. uh, and also you will need a 64-bit OS, either Windows 64-bit or Windows Windows 7 64-bit or Windows 8 64-bit. So no 32-bit players. So if you have Windows 7 32-bit or Windows 8 32-bit, you won't be able to play. play this. So don't download it expecting to play if you have 32-bit. Yes. So, so Mortal Kombat. We talked about this last week too. Well, they teased that, that something is coming. Uh -huh. Now they have announced uh -huh. Mortal Kombat X is going to arrive in 2015. Um, the trailer, I thought, looked pretty good, but whether or not, you know, it'll actually look like the trailer <laughs> once it's done is uh, remains to be seen. But apparently um, the developer NetherRealm Studios says that they do have um, an all-new graphics engine for the new game. Um, That's interesting. In the game or in the trailer, Sub Zero used the background to hurt him, to hurt Scorpion. Um, used he like froze a tree branch and then had the tree branch like break off in his face. Mm, I don't know if that's gonna be in the game. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't really think so. But it looked cool for the trailer. <laughs> you can make a lot of things look cool in CG. <laughs> Well, they did have, the trailer had the x-ray bone thingy, and that was in the last one. Yes. So, they're keeping that, I would assume, if they're showing it in the CG trailer. I would, I would assume so. Um, I mean, I haven't played a Mortal Kombat game really since... We have the, the new one. I know, but I just, I haven't played it. Probably since, like... I I, I'm Genesis interested and... to see <laughs> what they do with this one after the last one. I think it could be, it could be cool. Well, I mean, they've had some disappointing ones, and then they had some not so bad ones. So you know what's weird they is can... Scorpion reminds me of the Skyrim dude. He has that very like medieval chainmail knight sounding. Like when he walks, you can hear like the metal and stuff. Yeah, that's true. It's like that's clink, true. clink, like. I don't know what they're going for that, or with that. Like, it's just, the minute I heard that, I'm like, is, is Scorpion a knight of the round table? Like, what's, <laughs> what, what's going on here? What, what, like, I, I get it, because they're, they're trying to really differentiate Sub-Zero and Scorpion, like, before, right, you know, they, they were just. they looked so similar. Right, they with... were just a palette swap between right. yellow and blue. So, that, that's kind of interesting, but it's just. <laughs> Weird that they would make... He literally sounds like a knight walking with, like, full armor yeah. when he walks. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure we'll hear more with E3. Um, and as the game obviously develops with right. the uh, with the new engine that they're using, so... And the logo is the dragon with the X shattered in it. Correct. Achish. Correct. Shattered X. So, Spy Hunter story this week. Spy the original Hunter? 1990, or 1990, 1983 <laughs> driving game, if you'll remember from the arcade, where you were basically James Bond in a tricked out car. You had machine guns, and you could get missiles, and smoke screens, and oil slicks. And you drove into the back of a van like Knight Rider, and they gave you a superpower, and you drove back out, and you could call the van with a blinking red light on the arcade. This is the best arcade game ever. Um, but the big question was, was the car from Spy Hunter real on the box art? And the answer is yes. Um, apparently this has probably been known for a while, but it's the first I've ever heard of it. So it's the Isdera Imperator 108i is the actual car that the Spy Hunter car is from 19, um, it was born out of the 1978 Mercedes-Benz CW311 concept car. The engineer who made that concept car went on to form his own company, Isdera, and only 30 of them were ever made. 
Interesting. And their company still produces cars. There was one car in Need for Speed Carbon, I think. Not this one, but uh, another model of car that they make. But basically, to get the car, any car you want from them made, you have to call the CEO and request the car, and then it takes them six to eight months to build it for you because they're all handmade. Hmm. And then you get your car. So I'm assuming it's very expensive. However, it does I'm not sure. include machine guns or oil slicks or smoke screens. But they did leave out one thing. The, the car, the original car, had like a periscope where you would look in the rear view mirror, but it actually came up off the um, the roof of the car. Mm -hmm. So you could see behind it. I'm guessing there's like no glass or whatever behind you. And that's not shown on the, on the box side of the game. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So last story of the day. Yay! Natsume, Natsume. has um, announced that it's going to be unveiling three games at E3. Three games. Three games, yes. Ooh. One is called Harvest Moon The Lost Valley, okay. which is not to be con uh, confused with Story of Seasons. Consumed? Con Don't consume them together. <laughs> Stomach ache. No. Not to be confused with the one that Xseed is publishing. So Xseed is publishing um, a Harvest Moon game called Season of Stories, and then Natsume, who is the actual developer of the game, is bringing out Harvest Moon The Lost Valley to 3DS. Weird, but okay. Yes. Um, it's, it is kind of weird that they're both coming out at the same, like, same time. But um, and now you get two Harvest Moon games. Yes, which is awesome because I love Harvest Moon, so I, I can never get enough. There you go. Um, you so two. along with that game, uh, the company also uh, intends to show off a PSP JRPG, End of Serenity. PSP. It says PSP. They ended the PSP. You can't. They stop. Making they're it. showcasing the game, End of Serenity, a real fishing title for Vita. So maybe they're moving it to Vita? I hope so, because they ended the PSP this week. Yeah, yeah, I know that. But In Japan. I guess they're showing a game that was a PSP JRPG. Okay. I believe this, I this is PSP. coming out. Yeah. PSP JRPG. <laughs> PSP JRPG. Yes, coming to the Vita, uh, as well as uh, a number of iOS games, including a companion app for Hometown Story, which is um, a game that's been out since October, I want to say. And that's the one where you have your store instead of running a farm. Okay. Oh, do you have that game? So you're going to get the companion app? I don't know, because I'd have to find out more about it. Like, what's the point? What What is it? What does it give you? Helping me with. Okay. Like, is it helping me keep track of stuff, or what? Is, what is it doing? So we'll find that out. Um, yeah, so they've got couple things in the hopper. couple things in the <laughs> hopper? In the hopper? In the hopper. Get to the chopper. <laughs> this isn't no. Predator. Not so much? No. <laughs> Sorry. I just, I, I just think it's weird with the whole story of seasons, harvest moon, like. Yeah, no, that's weird. That is weird. <sighs> it's, it's weird. So. Uh, I'm sure we'll hear more, obviously, next week or once we talk about it next week on E3, you know, our E3 coverage. We are going to have E3 coverage? We did last year. Wow. Why wouldn't we this year? All right. Remember, you said it. I promised. You're, you're, <laughs> yeah, I you're, geared up. You better gear up for it then. <laughs> it's better start gearing up now. I know. Is that it? That's it. Oh, That's right. all she wrote. That's all for our show. Remember, E3 starts at 9.30 a.m. Pacific, which is 12.30 Eastern, as the Xbox E3 2014 media briefing will begin. And that'll kick off a whole week of insanity. Lots of announcements insanity. and other stuff. I want to remind you to check out our store over at pixelarmor.com where we have retro-inspired t-shirts for you to buy. Check them out. Check them out. Then you can check us out on our website at www.weeklygamingrecap.com where we put all the 
stories and the hottest ones all in one spot for you to do it. And then also check us out on Twitter.com at... Yeah, you can play. <laughs> Twitter.com. Yeah, it's okay. You said it like seven times. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Check us out <laughs> on Twitter at twitter.com slash wgamingrecap. <laughs> if you want to email us anything, you can hit us up at the address show at weeklygamingrecap.com and we'll read it on the air. And if you ask us a question, we'll hopefully research it and get you the answer that you're looking for. And remember to rate, comment, share, and subscribe to us right here on YouTube. We'll be back almost every Monday. Next Monday, indeed. Yes, definitely. Definitely next Monday. Until next time, see, see you later. later.